Hello, my name is Matthew Pfeiffer with MattPfeifferCoaching.com. Welcome to my YouTube channel. On this channel, I create videos and content about toxic, narcissistically abusive relationships. And if you have a question that you would like for me to answer, make sure you send it to JustAskMatt at MattPfeifferCoaching.com. Again, that is JustAskMatt at MattPfeifferCoaching.com. Just make sure you keep that email two to three paragraphs max, and you're also very direct and to the point of what your question actually is. Also, make sure you give me several days to get back to your email it does take me a little bit to circulate through all the emails. I do get a lot of emails and I have other platforms that I have to take care of. The fastest way to work with me though is to go to the links down below and to select a service that best works for you, whether it's one my one-on-one -on -one service or any other services that I provide. Also, make sure you hit the subscribe notification and the bell notification so you're notified each and every time I upload a new video. I upload new videos on this channel five days a week, Monday through Friday. With all that being said, let's get into today's video. So today's video comes from a person who found out that their ex might be cheating on them and that and they are concerned that they are going to get discarded. And the person is displaying a lot of stalking traits and is wondering how should they proceed and how should they handle this. So let's get into this email. So this email reads, Hi Matt, I found out my ex was cheating and possibly going to discard. I left first. I went no contact for a week. My ex went crazy and I found out that she had been spying on me through my cameras in my house and hacked my phone to get my messages and use my number. Um, that's, these type of traits are very, very common. Hacking. When, when people leave, when they discard, when they, they break up with a narcissist, one of the first things I tell them to do is to change all of the passwords. So this email continues. I had to tell her to stay away in order to get a restraining order. She responded and said she'd stay away, but that night I ran into her as she sat outside of my building. She sped away as soon as she saw me. I thought she was there for me, but on the building cameras, I found out that she has new supply in the building. I am not surprised, right? This is very, very common for people who are toxic and people who are narcissistic to end up sleeping with or the new supply being someone that you know, a neighbor, uh, someone that is in close proximity, especially if someone has these toxic narcissistic traits or stalking traits where you're considering a restraining order. Uh, so this email continues. Uh, she has a new supply that's in my building and I lost it. Uh, I reacted and I broke no contact. We speak, but she left me a message giggling and denying it, but I blocked her right after. My question is, how do I move forward? Should I still get a restraining order or have I lost my upper hand anyway? Anytime, one of the things I tell people is anytime you're wondering if you should get a restraining order, get the fucking restraining order every time. If you're wondering if you should, at least pursue it. And, and uh, you would much rather pursue it and get denied than to not do it uh, when you're questioning it, especially with this type of behavior. You've had phones hacked. You've had cameras hacked. She's showing up to your building and make no mistake about it. Do not give this person, do not give her the benefit of the doubt that she was there, uh, that she didn't choose a new supply within the same building. They're, they're always, when they're stalking you, they are always going to find reasons to find ways to get in close proximity to you. They will sleep with your boss. They will sleep with your neighbor. They'll sleep with a cousin. They'll sleep with a sibling. All of a sudden, they will have a membership at your gym. Next thing you know, they will be banking at the same bank that you go to. So they're going to find reasons to be in your area and say that it's not for you but it really is, right? They keep eyes on you, but also, especially in a situation like this, right? The reason why they do things like this is because of exactly what happened. They know that you're gonna react. So one of the things that I'm, that I'm gonna mention is that of course you're gonna react. Who's not gonna react? Even though you don't you know you don't wanna be with this person anymore, it doesn't mean that the, that the feelings during the relationship weren't real. It doesn't mean that you're not hurt by this. And they know this, right? They know how you're going to react when you see them out with a new person, that sort of thing. And that's exactly what they're looking for. They're looking for the reactive abuse. Uh, they are looking for that per for you to uh, to show emotion, right? Not necessarily to get back with you, but they want you 
they want to see you pissed off. They want what's called post-discard abuse, that even though the relationship is over, that they get to still cause you harm. And you have to sit there front and center and you have to watch them, quote unquote, be happy or see them out with other people while you are still hurting. And so make no mistake about it that that scenario was very, very intentional. Maybe this guy flirted with her while the two of you guys were together, not saying that she cheated. She There's a really good chance, really good possibility that she did. But even if she didn't, she knew that this guy probably approached her at some point in time. So she knew that it was a, a quick fix. She may have strung this guy along while the two of you guys were together, uh, knowing that there was an impending doom. Because one of the things that you mentioned is that uh, you felt like she was going to discard. And so... Regardless if she cheated or not, this was definitely set up. This was definitely planned, right, for the time when she either get discarded you or she knew that you were going to discard her because there was probably a lot of fighting building up to this situation. And so with all of this being said, not just because she she uh, has the new supply within the same building, but all everything else that you mentioned, right, it's not one area that we're looking for the restraining order, but the a plethora right the hacking of your accounts the hacking of your cameras the showing up and just being in random spots even if it is her dating a neighbor and so i can't promise you in your state that they're going to honor the the restraining order but it's worth the shot right we always need to make sure that we protect ourselves especially when we begin to see behavior like this so general rule of thumb if you feel like you might need a restraining order at the very least pursue it Also, another takeaway in this situation is to understand that when you see people like this and you see this dynamic and this behavior, this stalking type of behavior, and you happen to see them out in in public, that's not random, right? That was purpose by design. Quite often, again, of course, they're going to end up at the restaurant across the street from your work and then act like they had no idea that you were there or end up in the same bar, the same restaurant that you are. Trust me, they know. They they found out somehow, either by your social media or hack an account. Uh, one of the things I would encourage you to do in this situation is to change every single password. There might be things that you don't think is that big of a deal. Change those passwords too. It's very common for a narcissist to hack your Netflix account, your Hulu account. If you have accounts that they know your passwords to your to your electric bill and things of that nature, they have no problem hacking it and either using it to their benefit or creating some sort of havoc with it. So make sure that you take care of those things and you protect yourself. With all that being said, thank you very much for writing in. For anyone else that would like for me to answer a question, make sure you send it to just ask Matt at mattpfeiffercoach.com. Again, that is just ask Matt at mattpfeiffercoach.com. Make sure you keep that email two to three paragraphs max and also just make sure that you're very direct and to the point of what your question actually is if it's too long if it's too lengthy or if i don't understand what you're asking unfortunately i will not be able to get to it so with all that being said thank you very much and i will see you in the next video